the obesity paradox, when thinner means sicker and heavier means healthier. Part one, a paradox for the ages. Chapter three, fat real estate, does location matter? So here is a guide that I saw online that shows like an apple description pair, hourglass, inverted triangle ruler. So some of the different body shapes you can have and how you can carry your weight. The road to obesity is anything but straightforward. As scientists further their understanding of obesity and all of its mass faces, including why it can trigger multiple health conditions and people but spare others, we've uncovered some very intriguing new facts about fat. Fat cells are not all created equal, and different fat deposits have different functional characteristics in terms of how effortlessly they store and give up fat. These different characteristics may help explain why some types of fat feed illnesses and dysfunction, while others are harmless and even prevent disease. Today we know that fat cells do much more than simply shelter silent calories. Masses of body fat form complex, sophisticated hormonal organs that are very much involved in human physiology. And they are anything but passive, especially when we consider location. As they say in real estate circles, location matters. It can mean everything. Where your body stores fat can have a major effect on your heart health, as body fat distribution seems to play an important role in the development of obesity-related conditions. Lugging around too much abdominal fat puts you at a greater risk for disease than fat stored on your bottom, hips, upper arms, and thighs. Obese people typically suffer from abnormally low levels of growth hormone, likely due in part to higher levels of hormones that antagonize normal production of growth hormone and inhibit how growth hormones function. As you will learn, your body's collective fat mass could very well be one of the most industrious organs, serving a lot of functions keeping beyond keeping you warm, cushioned, and insulated. But some types of body fat do more harm than good. This is especially true of visceral belly fat, the fat surrounding the liver and the other abdominal or visceral organs, such as the kidneys, pancreas, heart, and intestines. Visceral fat has gotten a lot of press lately. We know now that this type of fat is the most devastating to our heart and our health. We may complain about our fat thighs, arms, and cellulite, but the kind of fat targeted by researchers today is the kind that's wrapped snugly around our organs deep inside. What it is about visceral fat that makes it a strong measure of disease risk? Although scientists are still working out all the details in rigorous studies, there are plenty of clues gathering to point us towards some answers. Essential fat versus storage fat. From a very broad standpoint, body fat can be divided into two categories, essential fat and storage fat. Essential fat is just that. It is essential for normal, healthy functioning and is found in relatively small amounts in your bone marrow, organs, central nervous system, and muscles. In men, essential fat constitutes 3% of our body weight, whereas women is about 12%. This is because women's essential fat also includes what is called sex-specific fat. Sex-specific fat is found in the breasts, pelvis, hips, and thighs. Storage fat, on the other hand, is the fat you accumulate beneath your skin and in your muscle and in specific areas inside your body. It also includes the fat that protects your internal organs from injury. Men and women generally have similar amounts of storage fat. So this is a healthy body composition for a man and a woman that I found for an image. So, you know, can we actually look at it and see? Visceral fat. Excess visceral fat, or belly fat, is a classic sign of being overweight and susceptible to many health risks. Sometimes you'll see this referred to as abdominal or central obesity. This type of fat actively releases fatty acids, inflammatory compounds, and hormones that ultimately lead to higher bad cholesterol. 
triglycerides, standing explanations for visceral fats, toxicity has been that it's related to an overactive stress response in the body. The effects of this include raised blood pressure, higher blood sugar levels, and increased cardiac risk. But a newer explanation relies on the concept of lipotoxicity. Unlike other body fat, visceral fat cells are unique in that they release their metabolic products directly into what's called the portal circulation. The passage of blood from a gastrointestinal tract and spleen through the portal vein to the liver. Free fatty acids in general circulation also connect, collect in, in the pancreas, skeletal muscle, heart, and other organs. None of these locations are designed to store fat, and the free fatty acids pile up, resulting in organ dysfunction, which impairs regulation of insulin, blood sugar, and cholesterol, as well as normal heart function. People who are of normal weight but have a high waist to hip ratio have an even higher risk of death than people who are considered obese based on BMI alone. Unlike visceral fat deep in the belly, the fat that accumulates around women's hips, thighs, and buttocks retain its contents, preventing it from doing any damage to the rest of the body. While you may despise saddlebags and thunder thighs, take heart, they might be good for you. Fatter thighs are linked to a lower risk of metabolic syndrome, a cluster of risk factors that include high triglycerides and raised blood pressure. Such findings have led some researchers to suggest that liposuction, which is typically performed on stubborn areas like the hips and thighs, might increase one's risk for heart disease. Does waist circumference matter? So we've just established that belly fat, the flab that snugs your middle holds, your underlying organs hostage, is the worst kind of fat around. Let me play devil's advocate now and challenge the importance of location. If abdominal fat is so terrible, then why is there evidence to show that some people with higher waist circumference withstand certain health challenges better than their skinnier comrades with the same conditions? Abdominal obesity is often measured by one of two ways, waist circumference or waist size compared to hip size, also known as waist to hip ratio. Several institutes have defined parameters for abdominal obesity around one or both measurements with different thresholds for men and women. Contrary to what you might think, research has also shown that people who are not overweight but have a large waist may be at higher risk for health problems than someone with a trim waist. Perhaps the best study to, ref to refer to in this regard is the well-known Nurses' Health Study, one of the largest and longest-run studies to date, which measures abdominal obesity and examines the relationship between waist size and risk of death in middle-aged women. The study involved 44,000 volunteers who were healthy at its start. All of them measured their waist size and hip size. 16 years later, the results were in. The women with the highest waist sizes had nearly twice the risk of dying from heart disease compared to those with smaller waist sizes. Now here is where the research gets interesting. I noted previously that the Mayo Clinic found a clear association between higher waist circumference and mortality. The findings were published in 2012. The senior author stated, we knew from previous research that central obesity is bad. But what was new to this research is the distribution of the fat is very important even in people with normal weight. This group has the highest death rate, even higher than those who are considered obese based on body mass index. From a public health perspective, this is a significant finding. As it turns out, the debate can't be all about weight, BMI, or waist circumference. It must include the fitness factor. Fitness has a huge say in the relation of fatness to mortality. Without question, there's a crucial divide between being just fat and being fat and fit. 